Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd. So today we're going to talk about some of the benefits of one of the most important verses in the Quran. And that's Ayatul Kursi. That is the Ayat, Ayatul Kursi. And first we'll read the Ayat and then we'll just talk about some of the Ahadith and just some small benefits. We won't go into the tafsir because that takes going into the books of the Mufassirin. But so we'll just give a basic explanation so that you will be able to understand the meaning. Go ahead and read for us, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, Allah la ilaha illah, which means Allah, that there is no one that has the right to be worshipped except Him. La ilaha illah means there is no God or nothing worthy of worship except Him, meaning Allah. It goes back to Allah. Al Hayyu al Qayyum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who uh, protects everything and He gives us rizq, He gives us everything that we have. That's why we have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be thankful to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al hayyul qayyum And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after saying Al Hayyul Qayyum, Al Qayyum, he says, Who sustains and protects all that exists, neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows what happens to them, meaning all of his creatures in the world, and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never compass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. His kursi extends over the heavens and the earth and he feels no fatigue in guarding them and preserving them. And he is the most high, the most great. So in this verse, Ayatul Kursi, there are so many benefits. That's why when you said you wanted to read Ayatul Kursi, I was hesitant because it takes time to really prepare and think about all the, the powerful meanings in this verse. But we'll just talk about very simply so you can get an understanding. First in the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah la ilaha illahu. So first that is Tawheed. The first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings for us and gives us information about in this, this very important verse is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for us that he is the only one worthy of worship. That's Tawheed right there. That only Allah should be worshipped. Tawheed. Okay? Also, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes some of his divine names and attributes. Al Hay Al Qayyum. These are very important attributes of Allah that Allah has. Al Hay Al Qayyum. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the Allah is the ever living, meaning Allah doesn't die. 
and Al Qayyum they translate to mean the one who sustains the sustainer that's a very limited meaning but that gives us an idea that Allah is the ever living and the sustainer what that means is Allah does not die so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it that or he affirms for himself that he does not die why is this important because many other religions they believe, or some other religions, they believe that Allah dies. Christians, for example, the ones who believe Jesus is God or Jesus is the Son of God, they say that Jesus is Allah and that He died for our sins or that He gave His Son for our sins. So they believe that Allah died for three days because they say Jesus is God. So they believe He died. But in Islam, no. Islam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself that he is al-hayy, al-qayyum, that he is the ever-living, he does not die. Does Allah die, Rashad? No. no. Does Allah sleep? No. No. That is what distinguishes in Islam, uh, Islam different than other religions, because other religions, they give God, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, characteristics of the people, meaning they make similarities between Allah's characteristics and people's characteristics. They say, oh, the Catholics, they say, oh, you know, some of the people, the, the nuns, they say, oh, I'm married to God. How can you be married to God? This is what a nun says. Because they believe that when they don't have relations, they don't believe in marriage, that they are married to God. They're married to God, meaning they're fulfilled with Him, fulfilled by Him, and they don't need to marry other people. Okay? They don't need to marry anyone. Because they believe they're saving themselves and that in paradise they will get whatever reward they're trying to get by uh, not marrying. Back to what's important for us is that verse, it establishes the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's the only one worthy of worship. It also affirms that Allah is the ever living and the sustainer. The third thing that we gain directly from the 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 verse in the Quran is then Allah says, neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. In Arabic we say this is nafi. That Allah negates or Allah removes from himself those characteristics of sleep and being tired. So we can say Allah is not or does not, does not sleep. He does not sleep. Okay? Allah does not sleep. Nor does he become tired. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. That means everything belongs to Allah. Who is he who can intercede with him except with his permission? And that is something very important for us. That means there is something called shafa or intercession. Meaning that when on the day of judgment, and, you know, after we all die, the Prophet وسلم, will be able to intercede with Allah on our behalf. What does that mean? The Prophet وسلم, will be able to ask Allah to take some of the Muslims that committed sins, take them out of the hellfire, if they were in the hellfire. The people who committed the big sins, some Muslims they drink, some Muslims they don't pray, some Muslims they smoke, uh, drugs, some Muslims they do bad stuff, that the Prophet وسلم, will be able to intercede and ask Allah to take them out of the hellfire. That's what we mean intercede. But they can, only the Prophet وسلم, can do that with Allah's permission. Some other Muslims will be able to intercede too. The person who dies is a mujahid, a great uh, fighter who fight for the sake of Allah and then he dies then he will be able to also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take the Muslims that did sins out of the hellfire to where, to where they can get out of, to get to Jannah. So that's a little bit about intercession. And Allah said in the verse, He said, and who is that, who is he who can intercede with him except with his permission? Okay? This has to do with shafa. Okay, the killing. Uh, and then, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the verse, it lets us know that Allah knows everything. His ilm, his knowledge encompasses everything. Allah knows everything. If an ant is in the black, the dark of the night, in a black night when you have no moon, in the desert, under a rock, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees it. If the ant is communicating with another ant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears it. So Allah's knowledge, Allah's hearing, He can hear everything. He is all hearing. He is Sami'un and Basir. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes that we worship Him by those names and attributes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, in this verse, that's why they call it Ayatul Kursi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He affirms that He subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that His his kursi, his kursi, which means like a footstool or a chair, is over the heavens and everything and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a kursi, which is over everything. We don't say that Allah sits on it, and we don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, what his relationship with his kursi, but we accept that we know that Allah estawa ala al-arsh. Allah rose above his throne. We know that Allah rose above His throne. But after that, we don't know. We don't know how. And we don't ask how. It's not important for us. Because that doesn't help us worship Allah better. What we need to know is those things that help us worship Allah better. And we believe in how, what Allah said about Himself in the Quran. And what the Prophet Wasallam said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the uh, Sunnah. So those are just some of the important, basic, basic understanding about Ayat al-Kursi. Ayatul Kursi is a very important verse in the Quran. Here's what the Prophet said uh, in one of the ahadith that the Prophet said, this is the hadith of Abu Huraira. He said, he said, Allah's Messenger وسلم, ordered me to guard the zakat uh, during Ramadan. Then somebody came to me and started stealing. Someone started stealing some of the food stuff. And then Abu Huraira caught him. He said, I caught him and I said, I will take you to Allah's Messenger. Then Abu Huraira described the whole narration, meaning the whole what happened to the Prophet. And that person said to me, Please don't take me to Allah's Messenger. So the man said to Abu Huraira, he said, Don't take me to the Prophet. And I will tell you a few words. I will tell you a secret by which Allah will benefit you. When you go to your bed, recite Ayatul Kursi. When you go to bed, recite Ayatul Kursi. For then there will be a guard from Allah who will protect you all night long. And Satan will not be able to come near you till dawn. That's the protection of Ayatul Kursi. When the Prophet ﷺ heard this, he said, he said to Abu Huraira, he who came to you at night and told you the truth about this, he told you this, this story that Ayatul Kursi will protect you. He said, although that person is a liar and it was the shaitan, he told you the truth. So the shaitan came to Abu Huraira that time and he told him Something that was truthful. And what was it that he told him? He told him that Ayatul Kursi will protect him if he reads it at night. It will protect you until Fajr. So that is something truthful that the shaitan said, A'udhu Billah Minhu, but he did tell the truth this time. Because he did, he was afraid of the Prophet ﷺ. And Abu Huraira related that to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ said, Yes. What the shaitan, that was the shaitan who told you? He usually lies, but he told you the truth this time. That ayatul kursi, if you read it before you sleep, it will protect you. And it will protect you from the shaitan. So, this is the last benefit, and there's still many other benefits, but we'll just end there. Reading, if you read ayatul kursi, reading ayat, 
Ayatul Kursi, before you sleep, before bed, protects you. Sorry, I'll write it up here. Protects you from from who? Yeah. From Satan. Shaitan. And, and the jinn. It protects you, yeah. It protects you from the shaitan, and that's Aqlam. The Aqlam jinn. It's the biggest jinn, Iblis. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and protect our evil and bless us to be those protected from the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.